On this episode of Tell Me Your Wife Is Out Of The House Without Telling Me Your Wife Is Out Of The House EV Conversions, we give this Toyota Prius Gen 3 inverter a bath. Well, if nothing else, this is a good way to test how waterproof this uh, inverter actually is. Look at there. I think that's its inverter. Um, I'm not a complete idiot, just a part-time idiot. So I will leave all the connectors in here. They've been already cut off, but they still should be making a waterproof, watertight seal. So no water should get inside. And as you can see, there are other um, closed off ports here, if you will. So we're going to get some hot water going and then I use Dawn dish soap because if it's good enough for ducks, it's good enough for us. This is actually an incredibly good degreaser. Uh, a lot of people will recommend like Simple Green and all these other products, which I think spend majority of their funds on marketing and less on actual product development, if you will. But this is an excellent product. Perfect fit. How did the Toyota know? I learned that brushes are your friend. So I'm just applying uh, full strength Dawn here, not diluted in any way. And I've used this before on greasy components, not necessarily electronic components. Um, we are focused on shock value here on this video, but we also do like clean parts. So I'm just going to lather this up really nicely. I think what we have here is MG1 and MG2 connectors. Then this is the battery uh, from the battery pack. It's an input if you will. Well, it could be output too in terms of region. I think this here is AC. I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm going to avoid getting water on this plug, obviously. That's the main communications. Um, it has two things coming off of it. I'll probably clean again once I have uh, removed a lot of these brackets and so on, but I want to keep them in just so they're plugging the holes. This is what not to do, so don't do this yourself. Don't try this at home. Don't try this in your own home. Try it in your friend's home on their inverters. Just like prepping a turkey for Thanksgiving, except it's cast aluminum. I can sense 
unsubscribing my viewership unsubscribing as I do this in the summer I would probably pressure wash this I still might could I don't know how many sides are there to a cube? Your wife's toothbrush also makes an excellent cleaning implement. Just be sure to put it back. There, I'm going to let that simmer for a while and eat at it, and then we'll come back to it. Having allowed ample time for Dawn to bite into this grease and grime and actually start dissolving it and uh, eating away at it, we have warmed up our water, and now we're going to just gently rinse it with some hot water and continue to agitate with the paintbrush to get all of it off. Let me see how bad of a mess the spray will make. Oh yeah. Why don't you guys take the time to turn up your cringe meters to 11? Waterproof connectors, we'll see about that. Won't we? There we go. <clears throat> We're just going to continue to do this until there are no bubbles or we ran out of hot water. We definitely don't want to get any water in there. Look at this thing. It's cleaning up so nicely. Will it run after? I don't know. I doubt it. You can see part numbers and whatnots. No purple power needed, no simple green, no difficult green. Basically, just whatever. You run what you brung, okay? You run what you brung. Now, where the hell is that communication plug at? I think it's on the bottom. We might be good. Ugh. Come on, you.
There's something here. I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure it's important. Once it's dry, we will, of course, remove all the connectors one by one, pretending we know what they are. Oh, man, this is looking so good. I think it's also like three pounds lighter. This is the plug I'm not supposed to get wet, so I'm just careful. Little, is this a Scotch Bride or whatever? Absolutely lovely. sure what we can do here of course I am now cleaning the parts that I won't even use because of my OCD okay after we have fully rinsed off our inverter Obviously, the next step is the drying process. We carefully transport our inverter to the drying station. This may not be obvious to some of you, but your wife's hair dryer makes for an excellent inverter dryer as well. Make sure you get all 47 sides. This really brings out the body of our inverter.
And there we have it. One completely semi-clean and semi-dry Toyota Prius Gen 3 inverter. Now, gentlemen, I am no mind reader, but I sense what you're thinking. Wait a damn thing. Here we go. Okay, let's see if we can see what this thing weighs. It's hard to see with the glare. It's 32 pounds, 31.9, which is barely seen there. So yeah, 32 pounds with all the uh, cutoff plugs still on it. So I would call it a 30 pound inverter. Nice. All right, we have now reached the fun part of the video segment, the take it apart portion with your host, the headless mechanic. So what I'm gonna do first is undo all of these uh, screws, which I assume are 10 millimeter. And the only thing I wanna look for here is to see if they are all the same length. And it would be really nice if that's what Toyota did. I've watched Damien McGuire take this apart, and so I'm basically uh, doing a monkey see, monkey do. But obviously, when we want to use this, we do want to um, remove the connection cover here, and that's the way you uh, will free these up and remove them. Uh, again, this is where the battery DC power is coming into the inverter. I believe this is MG1, motor generator 1 connection here. And then this is MG2, motor generator 2 connection coming in here. So let's go ahead and first undo this lid. I think this random order of uh, screw or bolt removal should uh, set some of your guys' OCD off the charts. Ha, I got you. All right. I think this is a little bit nicer than the Gen 2 inverter. That one has what I call a helmet, and you have to remove the entire helmet to get inside. On this one, Toyota decided just to give us a little... Uh, L shape uh, cover for all the connections you can see here so we'll have to undo those as well I'm not sure if these are the same type of screw let's undo some of them and check I would say by my guesstimation they're exactly the same so in one bucket they go Okay, and then of course, two up here for the battery. Now this should, in theory, come out, and it does. So this is DC, so it only has two leads, a positive and negative. I'm not sure which one is which, but I will learn that as I go. So that is removed. Worth mentioning is that on EV conversions, um, especially with like Toyota and Lexus dual motor and booster in uh, converter inverters, uh, we bypass and do not use the OEM battery uh, connections. So we will not be connecting our battery pack, be it from a BMW or, an, or a Nissan Leaf or Toyota battery pack, whatever we end up using. I'm favoring the BMW battery packs from the BMW hybrids. But regardless, we will not plug it in here because this goes to the bug booster and we bypass that. Okay, so we'll get to that portion later. But all we really want out of this maybe is to de design some sort of a cover for this port so that we keep, you know, kitchen sink water out of it. Moving on to MG1. <clears throat> so... Now when it comes to these connections, this one from the battery was DC, direct current. 
these are AC, alternating current, and it's three-phase power, so there's three wires or cables, whatever you want to call them. So, one, two, three. And this one has a nice O-ring. That's what kept the water out of it when we went crazy in the, in the sink. MG1 is a little shorty. And this is unfortunately what they do at junkyards. This is what I want to demonstrate to you guys is that unfortunately these get cut. And pick and pull, I'm sure you're watching. You're just burning money. You're throwing money down the drain because these cables are worth something and you could be selling them. Okay. <clears throat> What, what I want to mention now is that there's two connections here, and actually two wire type of connections and three total connections. So uh, the non-wire connections are water connections that will go here. One of these is water inlet or coolant inlet, and one of these is coolant outlet. So we don't have any hoses on this particular inverter, you may have some stubbies on yours. So water gets connected to this apparatus for cooling. That's one type of connection. The second connection is the orange cables, which is high voltage. This is dangerous stuff. On the Toyota, the system would run approximately 200 volts. We're going to be running our system on double that, closer to 400 volts. So <clears throat> just wanted to mention that. And the other one then is the black wires or the black harness, which is low voltage. This is like your regular car uh, voltage of 12 volts or 15 volts, 3 volts, what have you. It's communication, it's signaling, whereas this is power. So moving on, this is now MG2. Again, this is held in with a really nice rubber O-ring, three connections for the three phases. And there we have it. Hopefully you guys can see that. I might as well remove the bracket that held these on now. It's down here. Let's see if I can do this. really like how all the screws are the same because I'm really good at mixing stuff up. So yeah, this was all butchered, unfortunately. Okay, so if we continue on with just getting rid of all the high voltage, I think this last part, this last connection that goes from the side is for AC. And I think to get to that, I'm going to have to loosen up this top bracket here. Will this one fight me? What is it doing? Uh, how is that in there? I am not a fan of plastic. Of course, I broke it, and I really don't care. Okay, we'll get to these later. I want to continue on with the high voltage. Okay. So this, again, this has two, two connections on it. This is a DC to the direct current uh, powered air, com air compressor. So let me show you, here we can see the air conditioning compressor with an orange cable. So here it is. So it's orange for high voltage, but DC. And that now we've liberated all of the high voltage stuff. We'll move on to the uh, low voltage next. I might just get this bracket off for funsies. 
Okay. Okay, onto the black wire harness, which is for low voltage stuff. This, I don't think we need to unscrew. We just simply unplug it, and hopefully I know how to do it and do it on camera. So this plug, we're going to be using the EV BMW zombie verter to operate this. And um, I think, I'm trying to think if on the zombie we can use this OEM plug and on the internal card option we have to replace it. There's, there's multiple ways to control these devices. There's one way where we replace the logic board inside of this inverter. We actually have to open it up. I won't be taking that uh, uh, route. I'm going to try to leave this thing completely intact and use what is called a zombie verter. Zombie Verter is uh, Open Inverters and EV BMW's collaboration on a uh, mother of all controllers. So it's a uh, VCU vehicle control unit for electric vehicles that is capable of uh, supporting different types of um, inverter motor combinations, charger combinations, and so on, be it... Um, Toyota, be it Lexus, Yaris, but things are constantly changing, constantly developing. So there's one more connection. This device here, this inverter, is what I would call all-in-one. Arguably, it does three things, maybe even as many as four things. There's a logic board in here, so we can call this a controller. But in addition to that, there's an inverter for MG1, an inverter for MG2 and a converter to convert the 200 volts coming in and send it out to our regular car battery as 14 volts to charge the 12 volt nominal car battery. So I believe this is a positive lead that technically runs to the um, uh, fuse block and then continues on to the car battery, regular car battery in the Prius. Um, I'm not a big fan of using black conduit or uh, loom on a positive lead, and the wire in here is actually white. Um, I will probably replace this with red, just so I know this is positive. But another thing that I uh, discovered is that this is held on with one bolt here, one, one nut. Okay, so this is just a nut. And then, of course, that is stuck on there. Okay. Yeah, so this is cut, and this is another downside of buying stuff from Pick and Pull, uh, which ha has all these cut wires. You know, ideally, in an ideal situation, we would all buy a complete donor car, right? Park it in our driveway at our mother-in-law's house and cherry pick at it and cannibalize it as we see fit unfortunately that is not always the case that is not a luxury that we have here i am just popping that other screw in that was removed unnecessarily let me tighten this down to 30 foot pounds oh that's the wrong one So that's just tight on there, similar to what this is, right? It just holds the uh, bra bracket or the plug connector thingy. I think that does it. Uh, thank you guys for putting up with my uh, horrible humor. I think um, sometimes it pays to laugh at oneself and keep things kind of fun and interesting. Um, we all know there's plenty of white papers, and if you're into reading uh, dry manuals, then this channel is not for you. We're going to try to have some fun, be silly, and keep it light. You know, I want to um, prevent people from being intimidated by electric cars. There are less parts in electric cars than there are in internal combustion engine cars, okay? We can argue that till you're blue in the face. 
And I'm not just talking about moving parts. I'm talking about all components. There are less components in an electric car than there are in a regular gasoline-powered car. Okay, so um, read up on it. Look into it. Uh, I'm not saying do it, but I'm saying if you wanted to, you could convert a car to electric. Thanks for watching.